Hi everyone, I am Shravan Kumar Singh and this is my final project presentation on case study in OCR of printed characters. Now firstly let me go to the problem statement. So what I did, I built a web application and that uses deep learning, Keras and TensorFlow with CNN and RNN. In RNN I used GRU instead of LSTM. So what this web application does, you upload the image and it will, when you click on predict, it will predict the characters in the image. And let me now show you the demo. So firstly what I'll do, I'll go to Anaconda Navigator and I click on launch. So what that will do is that will launch the spider. And Spider is a flask based uh, framework in the ID where if you load your file and then you click on play, so it will start the web server. Now let me go to my web server. So let me type the same URL and press enter. So what's happening here is that it has loaded the first page and now I can select a file to get the alphanumeric key for that so I'll select the image if I say open it will load the page on the left side it will load the image on the left side then you can say predict and as soon as I click predict it will show me the alphanumeric text in that so let's take another example so if you say this one and then you see the image loaded on the left side and when you predict again, so what it will do, it will call a method on the background. That's a predict method and that will process my input, call the model and give me the output. So now let me go back to my presentation. So what I did for this one is the software and the hardware that I used is AWS and Python 3.6. Uh, Anaconda Navigator, I just showed you the spider that I sh just showed you, the Jupyter Notebook I use, Keras with TensorFlow, and the other Python libraries, and, f and for building web application, I use jQuery and Bootstrap. So I also use my own system with a Mac operating system as well as AWS. Now let's see the installation. So firstly what I did I download the Anaconda distribution and since I had Mac so I installed the Mac version and the Python I used was version 3.6. So as I showed you earlier so Anaconda Navigator gives you some out of box software you can install them then you can launch them as I did for Spider. Now let's go to the data generation. So I was searching through the internet by, but I couldn't find any library with images in the annotation on that. So what I did, I found one library named Python Imaging Library. It's a free library for Python programming and it has support for opening, manipulating and you can save your images in different formats. So what I did. I used that library and created my own methods like first method as you can see here is gen image. So what it will do it will take the size of the image that you want the number of image that you want and which folder you want to put into and then based on that it will generate the image and it will save in a particular file like you see here. The training uh, image goes to image JSON training and the test goes to images in test. So if you see here the uh, folder structure, it's an image JSON training, image JSON test. These are holding all the images and if you see uh, the train and test, these are holding the JSON files for that. Oh, sorry, the other way around. The JSON contains the JSON related to that image and this training test contains the image. So if you see on the right, this is the image and this is the JSON corresponding to that. So now let me go to the architecture that I have. So what I used is couple of CNN layer, couple of GRU layers. So you see here, so after input, 
I have first CNN layer, then there is a max pooling after that, then there is a CNN second layer, then again a max pooling layer and a dense layer, then there are two GRU layers and they are both forward and backward, then there is a final dense layer and there, then there is the output. So I have used GRU rather than LSTM because I found it to be faster and it was giving me decent accuracy that I need. So this next slide is for the setup and utility functions I created. So there are some utility functions like get all alphabets, label to text, text to label. So what get all alphabet is doing, so it is scanning through the whole JSON in the training and it is trying to find what alphabet it is covering. So you see here. Uh, it is covering A to Z, small letter A to Z, capital letter, and it's also covering all the numbers from 0 to 9. So this is a good setup for our training the model. And now you see that I also created an image class and there is a constructor for that in it. So if you pass your image length, image height, the best size and the max length of your sample and then I have a method that I specially created to standardize the data. So how it works that it is using CVT, to re reading the image, it's resizing it, then I am dividing by 225 to standardize that data. And then I built a subsequent data method. So what's doing it is when you run the model, it's always going to the next data set and pulling the data from the directory. So you, you see here when I'm training the model, so I created a function called train the neural network. So it is getting the input and there is a convolutional layer, then there are two max pooling layer, then I'm reshaping that and there's a dense layer. Then there are some GRU layers, then there is another dense layer. And then I am doing the prediction using softmax. And uh, the loss function I'm using is a CTC loss. And it is a famous loss function I saw in a paper. And then what I am doing is that if the model is running for the first time, it will be saved in a directory. But if it has already been run, so since I already saved it in a directory, so it will be loading from that directory. And for final prediction of my text characters, uh, I'm using best part decoding. So what it does is that at each step we choose the most active output and the resulting path is the most likely one. So I built a method for that. So if you see the training and validation loss and you see that accuracy here is very high. So validation loss is much less than 1%. It's around 5.5, 8, 10 to the minus 4 and the number of epochs I ran was 5 and it is trained with around 4.8 million parameters and I tried with different epochs and different parameters but I found this to be the best and if you see on the right I'm also testing with one of the image and you see when I'm predicting the output it is nearly a perfect to what are the input I gave as you can see in the image as well as you can see in the prediction. So now let me go to the web application that I developed. So as I showed you earlier that you have to click on this run button after loading your Python notebook and this will be started in by default 5000 port. You can change the port if you want and then you it can be accessed by a browser like you see the screens here, like what I showed you earlier, then you can upload the image and you can predict based on that image and then it will uh, give you the alphanumeric text for that. So this is the code for the predict. So as soon as you submit an image, what it is doing, it is calling this predict method and it is taking image file path as an input and it is reading that image file path and it is using the saved model and then I am standardizing the image that is passed through the input and then I am running the model 
to predict for the input data and then I am getting the response for that and if you see there is a routing server code so any request that comes here firstly goes to this uh, app root slash so this uh, displays the initial web page that you saw earlier so if you see here so this first page is generated because the request <coughs> is routed to this one but when you click on predict what it is doing is it is calling this part of my program it is checking it's a post image then it's uh, decoding the image and uh, it is loading the image from there and it is making a call to predict function that I showed you earlier and then it is returning the response in a JSON format so let me show you how the image gets transmitted from the browser to the server so image comes to the server in a decoded form so what we do so uh, image comes to the server in the form of encoded form so what I do so I decode the image then it transforms to a form that I can use for predicting my image so now let me go to the final slide so I would say while building this application I learned a lot so first challenge I faced was the data so I tried to find the data with images and annotations with it but I couldn't find that so what I did I searched through if there are any libraries that are available that are specially built by Python and then I found that there is a Python imaging library and it has cool ways to generate the image and I can build methods so that I can pass the how many images I want what size I want then I can build the JSON around that and the second important thing I learned so I always learned how to train the model how to make a prediction but I never understood from end-to-end -end application how user will interact with my model so this is a very good learning for me that I was able to build the application where you can upload the image and it will call the already trained model it will call a method of the model and it will return you the relevant output of that image and other thing I tried in models we typically use CNN, RNN and even LSTM so I read about the form backward but I never implemented that earlier but while building this application uh, I found this interesting way to do forward and backward by adding multiple layer uh, GRU layers and that was a very good learning experience third thing as I said before uh, the building web application was a very informative experience and you can see that I use the flash framework so learning about that was also very useful for me currently there is one limitation on of the application so currently when you pass the image to this application this can only tell you about the seven alphanumeric characters so if you see my code here so if I go back so you see the max tensile length, length I'm putting here is seven but definitely we can change it to incorporate any number of letters or uh, numbers here so if I go back to my conclusion so definitely we can extend this uh, application and we can upload any type of image and we predict that and what else we can do we, we can extend it further by uploading any image which has like bunch of letters and numbers in it and then it will be able to highlight that portion of the image and then we can uh, read that portion of the image and try to predict uh, what are the alphabets and numbers on that image and that that would be very interesting exercise to do I think that's it from my side uh, thanks a lot bye bye